Okay, welcome back. We are in Matthew chapter 17. We're talking about John the Baptist. We're also talking about Elijah because Jesus said that uh, in one sense, John the Baptist was Elijah. Now, that shouldn't be a surprise to us at this point in time. Why? Well, because... Uh, 30 some years uh, prior to this, before John the Baptist was even born, Gabriel was appearing to John's father, uh, Zacharias. Remember that story? Okay, it's in the first chapter of Luke's gospel. Let's read Luke chapter one, verses 16, 17, uh, just to kind of get uh, this in context. Uh, Gabriel said to John's father, he will turn many of the sons of Israel back to the Lord their God. Verse 17, and it is he who will go as a forerunner before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. See, so already before the man's even born, he's already being identified with Elijah. And what, what for? To turn the hearts of the fathers back to the children. That's reading from Luke chapter 1, verse number 17. That's a direct quote from Malachi, which we read the last time, okay? And the disobedient to the attitude of the righteous so as to make ready a people prepared for the Lord, okay? So that's number one evidence. Now, number two evidence is that way back in Matthew chapter 11, when Jesus was giving his tribute to John the Baptist, you might recall, uh, we talked about this when we read it, he, he, he was saying among those born of women, there's no one greater than John the Baptist. And he went on to say, if you care to accept it, he, um, now I'm going to read to you from Matthew chapter 11, verse number 14. If you are willing to accept it, John himself is Elijah who was to come. So based upon that verse alone, we could assume, wrongly assume, however, that John completely fulfilled Malachi chapter 4 and verse number 5, where God said, I'm going to send Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and terrible day of the Lord. But, however, we have this very interesting verse where we're reading now in Matthew chapter 17, when, when Peter, James, and John asked Jesus about Elijah, how come the scribes say that Elijah must come first? And, and we've already read this, let's read it again so we get all the context. Um, verse number 11 of Matthew chapter 17. He answered and said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. So th there's no doubt a future fulfillment of Malachi chapter 4 and verses uh, 5 and 6. But I say to you, this is verse number 12, that Elijah already came and they did not recognize him but did to him whatever they wished. So also the Son of Man is going to suffer at their hands. So this is like the second time he's made reference to his soon coming sufferings. Now, verse number 13, then the disciples understood that he had spoken to them about John the Baptist. Okay, so I think we've really done a thorough look at John the Baptist's connection, identification with Elijah. Was John the Baptist actually Elijah? No, no, no. He would come in the spirit and in the power of Elijah. Okay, that's what Gabriel had said to John's father, Zacharias. And uh, Malachi said that, you know, God said through Malachi, I will send you Elijah. Uh, and Jesus confirms that Elijah is coming. Here's the question. Will it actually be Elijah, the person Elijah? Or will it be someone like John the Baptist who came in the spirit and power of Elijah? Well, that's a great question. I'm not claiming I know the answer to it. What fascinates me in this is that in verse number 11 of Matthew 17, Jesus said, Elijah is coming and will restore all things. And that's something we already read in Malachi chapter 4 and verse number 6, the final verse of the Old Testament. He will restore the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. There's that restorative ministry of the future coming John the Baptist. Some say... Uh, they, they surmise, they assume that the one of the two witnesses that we read about in the book of Revelation who prophesy, you know, and then they're ultimately killed in the streets of Jerusalem, that one of those two witnesses is Elijah. Uh, a couple reasons, they'll say, well, you know, Jesus did say he is coming. And, um, but on the other hand, um, I, I, when I read about those two witnesses in the book of Revelation, I can't see that I say, I can't 
say that I see, <laughs> excuse me, that there's any restorative ministry uh, described uh, through those two prophets who prophesy. I mean, they all, they just torment the world with their prophecies. Basically, nobody repents, you know, and then they're killed. And then a few days later, they're resurrected, and then they, and then they fly up to heaven, you know. So I'm not one of those ones who thinks that what Jesus said, Elijah is coming, will be fulfilled during the ministry of those two witnesses. I'm more inclined to think that there will be, I'm hoping, I'm understanding this right, there'll be somebody with a ministry like John the Baptist who will be anointed with that powerful preaching ability and spirit and anointing and, and, and will attract many people and there'll be a, a, a restoration of all things, you know. And that, boy, there's I wish I knew more about exactly what Christ said there. We know there's a, he said that there'll be a, he'll restore the hearts of the fathers to the children and the hearts of the children to their fathers. I've always wondered if that is talking about, you know, earthly parents and their earthly children with their earthly fathers because there's a lot of rebellious children. Or I wondered if it has some other deeper spiritual meaning, like he's going to restore the hearts of people who are spiritual spiritual children to the hearts of the spiritual fathers, you know, in one sense, that we'd go back to the Bible and there'd be a restoration of Christianity in its uh, primitive form when it was pure and unadulterated with all the traditions and trappings that we find today in the church. I don't believe there's gonna be a complete reformation of the entire world of Christendom, but I would certainly hope that there'd be a restoration of the book of Acts, at least within a, a segment or uh, you know, a group within Christendom that would turn their hearts back to God. That would be absolutely wonderful, okay? All right, uh, more to come, more interesting stuff to come. Can't wait to get to it. I'll see you next time. Heavenward 7 is made possible by the financial support of viewers like you. Thank you.